pagan Rome, Christian Rome, are somehow combined in a compromise. The baths of Diocletian became a church. The temple of Minerva became the shrine of the Virgin Mary. When we go to the Pantheon, for example, here in Rome, which still stands, we have to remember the vision that Hadrian had before he built it, when the goddess Sibylle said to him, I will be with you in the battles you're going to fight, but make this my temple. Hadrian went further, he made it the temple of all the gods under Sibylle. But when Christianity came, this became a shrine to the Virgin Mary. Here in the Campidoglio, we see a statue of the goddess Minerva. And here we see a church called Santa Maria Sopra Minerva. Holy Mary on top of Minerva. Her church has been raised on the ruins of the temple of the pagan goddess. There are two elements, the pagan and the Christian, but that's not enough. In the middle of the square, we see a Roman emperor Marcus Aurelius, who wasn't a great conqueror, a great letter of blood, he was a Stoic. He believed in working hard, behaving sensibly, behaving justly, not hoping for too much from life, following, in fact, the philosophy of Stoicism. Three elements, then, pagan, Christian, Stoic, and to crown it all, the human touch. These buildings are the work of Michelangelo, who is sometimes believed, and is certainly believed by me, to be a greater architect than he was either a sculptor or a painter. And he's created this final magic which brings the human, the Christian, the pagan, and the Stoic together. 